This is a uh, new video. It got released just a little bit ago, and uh, it's from an actual like a, a non-video game exclusive uh, channel. It's about the predatory monetization of video games. Okay, here we go. In the late 1990s, the internet was gaining popularity at a rapid rate, and tech yeah. enthusiasts were starting to download video game content straight off this new communications platform. Those were the, the good days. days. That's me. Sorry, guys. Downloadable content or DLC were primarily things like fan-made extensions to popular video games and Doom mods. Yeah, like back in the day, like what is is this? Um, I'm pretty sure this is Unreal Tournament. I know I'm looking at it from like a fucking. This is like recorded on a Nokia phone or something. But I'm pretty sure this is Unreal Tournament, and uh, it's Quake. I mean, like really, the fucking game. I always get those two games confused. All right, I feel like they're almost about the same. And lots of Doom mods. It yeah. was mostly harmless fun amongst a small group of technically proficient gamers and developers. This would change with the introduction of online gaming platforms like MMOs yep. and Microsoft's Xbox Live, which allowed players to make purchases directly over the internet. For the first the few Rock years, was there? this was I don't mostly that game at all. companies selling subscriptions to play in their virtual worlds or selling small expansion packs online, which wouldn't justify a new game release in their own right. The push yeah, like we had that with like the Conqueror's expansion for uh, Age of Empires, stuff like that. ...was minimal, and most players were actually excited to be able to pay 4 or $5 to get an extra few hours worth of gameplay without having to go to GameStop to buy an entirely new game. This was a thing this even in Halo. This was until 2006, Halo 2. when Bethesda, the developer of the Elder Scrolls series, released DLC which added nothing to the game other than armor for your in-game horse. This $2.50 optional download in a single player game was the first time that players actively pushed back at the idea of paying money for pixels that otherwise added nothing to the game. Despite the negativity, the Horse Armor became the ninth best selling DLC for the Elder Scrolls game, beating out entire expansion packs which took thousands of hours in development time to produce. By contrast, the horse armor was just a 3D model which took a 3D artist an afternoon to put together. Other gaming studios saw this success, and 18 years later, most of the money made by the $180 billion yeah. gaming industry comes from sales made after the customer has already purchased the game. Yep. This might seem harmless to most of you watching. You might even think it's a good way to subsidize the cost of development, making video games cheaper for people who are not interested in these in-game purchases. I feel but like what most people are good with, like this is like my opinion, is most people are good with microtransactions if they are for a game that you're not like... I think for Final Fantasy and WoW, it's bullshit that they have microtransactions because you're already paying a sub. But if you are playing a game for free and it is being continuously developed, then if they have some microtransactions in the game, it's not a big deal. That's always been, that's been my perspective. That's been, that. that's what I'm okay with. If it's, yeah, PoE is a good example. Like, that's the best example I can use. Uh, League of Legends, Lost Ark is actually another example, too. That shit's free. Uh, Genshin Impact, that's the thing, right? Is like, so you have games like Genshin Impact, which is like, that's the extreme. And like, I, 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 that kind of sucks. But the thing is that it's still kind of optional. And it is also a, uh, it's a free, it's a free to play game. Apex Legends, Warzone. I think Warzone's free. I'm pretty sure it is. Here we These go. seemingly harmless pixels are being knowingly exploited to prey on some of the most vulnerable people in our society. Yeah. To find out why, it's time to learn how money works, which was made possible today by Morning Brew. Wow. Morning Brew is a daily email newsletter which keeps you up to date with what's going on in the world of business, tech, finance, crypto, and culture, all in a simple, easy to digest format. So it's, each it's, daily it's newsletter features page? short segments which will take you no more than a minute to read, but will still get you up to speed with what's going on in the world all while providing handy short links if you do want to read further. It's interesting. Morning Brew mixes in some heavy hitting stories about major world events with other more niche stories like this one about an NFT collector who lost over $2 million in board apes after falling Good. for a run of the mill phishing scam. This story was actually very useful to me as I was writing this video. You'll find out why shortly. Morning Brew is the best way to start a productive day. And the best part of it is it's completely free. 
so there is absolutely no risk in finding out how much better informed you can be when you pair your morning coffee with a scroll of morning brew. Check out the link below to easily sign up. Video game developers are companies with a Free. profit motive, and in many instances, they money, shareholders though? who they need to keep happy. There's always a Selling way they a make game money. Once is great, but it means there is a set amount of money that can be made from a set amount of games. Yeah. Exceptions do exist. Somehow I have managed to buy Skyrim for the PS3, PS4, and PC, but I don't like to talk about it. The problem Good. here is that some people are only willing to spend $20 a month on video games where other people are happy to spend thousands. <laughs> you could try to charge thousands of dollars yeah. for your game, but unfortunately, not many people would be willing to pay that price. The only way to truly maximize profit is to get every possible gamer to pay the maximum possible amount mm -hmm. that they are individually willing to pay for the game. That's yep. impossible to achieve with a direct sale. A GameStop employee can't be expected to look over someone's financial records before setting an asking price for a copy of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, so you need to be smarter. What you need to do is offer a game that gets slightly better the more you pay for it. If you want to get really crafty, you can make the game itself free to download and play, but lock big advantages behind in-game transactions. Who would do such a thing? Of Clash of Clans is probably a perfectly wow. fine game, but you will Who be would do such by a thing? Dude that drops two thousand dollars a month upgrading his base. Two thousand dollars for you, but it's great for the game company. Jesus! Most people only play their game because it's free. Some might throw yeah. in a few bucks to pay for a premium subscription. And, and the then, thing is, like, the the more players a game has, the more value that microtransactions give people. Because most people like to stand out and be special. Like, for example, let, let's go ahead and uh, let's go into a hypothetical, all right? So you have two WoW private servers, all right? One private server has 100 people playing on it. The other private server has 10,000 people playing on it. Which server do you think you could sell a Scarab board mount for more money on? You see what I'm saying? So the more people that are playing the game, the more value that is perceived from having microtransactions. That's how it, that's how it, that's how it works. Yeah, the highly populated one, because you get to show it off to more people. And that's the way that the free-to-play players actually create value in some ways for the uh, the company. There are a few hundred so-called whales that drop $1,000 a month to yep. make sure they are the most powerful players possible. Yeah. This game extracted the maximum possible amount of money out of everybody that plays it. The game developers aren't even worried about all the players who aren't even paying them a cent. No. They might cost them a small marginal amount for server hosting, but they are offering back something far more valuable. They are the entertainment for the whales who are paying thousands of dollars a month. Yeah, so the, they're the little minnows that the whales eat. It, it's like this is like you queue into some free-to-play kid and you spent $80,000 on this game. I can pretty much bet that you're going to win. You know, like that's just, it, it is what it is. Yeah, the free to play player uh, players are content. Yeah, that's exactly how it works, man. Buying gold and wild, join GDKPs, get all the gear, feel better than others. Yeah, everybody wants this. If it doesn't provide a competitive advantage, I don't see how it's a problem. Like with WoW, I don't like it because you pay a sub. But other than that, I don't really care because you're not paying for the game. So like anything that you get, like to a certain degree, if you're getting something for free, yeah, you can complain about whatever you want. But if you're complaining about microtransactions in a free game, like, just, I mean, come on. Even if it's pay to win. Like, in my opinion, a, a free game can be pay to win. I don't give a fuck. Because you go into it with that, like, you know that. Like, you, you play the game. It shows you how to pay to win within probably five minutes of playing it. Who gives a shit? Yeah, you got your. You Isn't make your own to decision. Keep paying more money to upgrade their weapons if they can't use them to absolutely dominate some poor kid who thought they would just try out a free mobile game. Yep. Business students call this price skimming, where businesses will alter their prices for the same product for different people in order to maximize profit. They have this sometimes. A uh, price skimming happens in a couple of interesting ways. So, uh, two different ways that price skimming can happen is uh, well, it's actually there's a lot more different ways. Uh, it's kind of like if you, like there are HEBs, HEB is a grocery store here. The HEBs that are closer to like the really, really poor areas, like the projects basically, they actually have cheaper food. And the reason why 
is because the people can't afford like that's they, they can't afford the expensive food. But if you go up to Westlake, if you go up to Lakeway right here in Austin, the HEBs are charging more money for the same exact thing. Because those people over there are pulling up in a Maserati. Yeah, bitch, you can pay $7 for a loaf of bread. Uh, this is what happens. Yeah, the Westlake HB, that's what it is. And so uh, that's one example. There's also other examples. I've heard that there are certain times that you have to put in your uh, fucking your zip code. And certain zip codes that have a much higher average income get different prices in online uh, online shopping stuff. And this is also another way, like whenever you actually, you're talking about these are, this is just... Like this is like large scale. This is large scale price skimming. And then you get down to like personal price skimming where like you start knowing the person and you know, it's like this guy can pay a lot more money for it. Let's charge him 150 whenever we normally charge people 130 and and he'll pay that because he has more money to spend. And this especially happens whenever people try to charge like businesses versus individuals and price skimming actually happens in a reverse way, sometimes in healthcare, because what happens is whenever you say that you have insurance they bill the insurance company for $250 but if you say you don't have insurance they only bill you for a hundred uh, this happened to me multiple times because I've had I've not had insurance most of my life I have not had well, most of my life I have had insurance because my my dad had it for me because of his company but most of my adult life I did not have insurance it was actually only in the last year that I've had insurance as an adult in my entire adult life from ages i think it was like 18 might have been 21 because of his insurance i don't remember uh but basically 18 or 21 to now so like yeah it, that's the same thing and uh 200 try 10,000 no i mean like i have like downstairs i have accountings of like all of my mom's bills and stuff like that like i'm not like i'm talking about actual like numbers that i've seen like a, a doctor's visit here is about 250 ish dollars if you go uh, as a uh, as an insured person, it's it's about that much money. But if you go as an uninsured person, I've done both. Uh, you are charged about a hundred bucks. So yeah. Uh, so this is like different ways of price skimming with all kinds. Of, like I mean, trust me. Like if you guys like y'all know, as soon as you get into anything that like let's be honest, price skimming. What is price skimming? Price scamming. So guess what? I'm enthusiastic about it. I could talk about this all gamers day. Gamers call this pay to win. Monetization in games takes on a few different forms. The best type of game in the gamer's eye is a game that is free with no outlets for monetization at all. Uh, yeah. The problem is, of course, that this doesn't generate any revenue for whoever put the time and effort into developing yeah, the game. Yeah, you can't make money. That doesn't mean that these games don't... That's not necessarily true. They can sell ad space on the game, like if it's a browser game or something like that, but like it doesn't really matter. Like That's like a fringe example, but it, it's almost always true. This though, and I salute the dedicated souls behind them. The next step down from there are games that are free to play that sell game items that make cosmetic changes yeah, only. A new hat that. for your character or a dapper new outfit. It doesn't improve your stats in the game, but it's cool to look at, and some people are happy to pay some money for the outfits, which keeps the game financed. Yeah. Pretty good trade, if you ask me. That's fine. One it's worse whatever. than that is games that you need to pay for up front, but also offer cosmetic items. Again, these items don't give you any special... That is... that I'm still okay with that. I'm still okay with games you have to pay for that offer cosmetic items. I'm totally fine with it. Because the game is being continuously developed, it's it, it's being continuously developed. How is that unreasonable? Yeah, how, how is that how is that unreasonable? Like, I mean, come on, storm mounts. Oh, but what about storm mounts? Shut! Holy fuck! Do not, do not. Easy to say whenever you have a lot of money to waste. You're right, man. Every single time I get into one of these games, I'm spent. I'm like this. I'm a big spender, man. Uh, I, you know, I, I go into one of these games. I spend all my money, man, and I'm showing off all my cool stuff because I'm better than you because I'm a streamer and I can pay for microtransactions. Shut the fuck up, bitch. You think I'm buying this bullshit? Fuck no. Like I was a default skin in Fortnite for years. I don't even have. I don't even know. What like the only time I ever bought skins in a game 
was probably like maybe one of, I, I'm trying to think like the first time I can think of is Apex Legends. I spent 200 bucks for basically stream content and I made the money back. I, I don't I don't spend a whole lot of time playing these fucking games. Uh, PoE PoE is a free fucking game. Okay, that's a free fucking game. That's not a game I gotta pay for. Advantage over other players in the game, but if you've already paid sixty dollars for I did a video buy new game, skins. you might not like having more shit marketed to you in the game itself. The, I don't Wars even use. again are free games that have in-game advantages for sale. Yeah, mobile games are notorious for this. You can download Rise of Warship Legends for free, but if you want to be competitive against other players, you are almost forced into paying money to skip arbitrary timers and unlock yeah. powerful items. The absolute worst are games that you need to pay for, but still offer in-game advantages for money. World of Warcraft. When EA released Star Wars Battlefront, they were met with yeah. um, moderate resistance for walking Jesus. characters like Darth Vader behind real cash paywalls or obscenely difficult in-game challenges. But yep. what's the actual harm here? It might make some games a little bit less fun, but it's not like anybody is forcing you to play them. Well, the harm comes to the people that unfortunately already do. A 2018 report yeah, makes by Daniel game King worse. of the Society for the Study of Addiction has mm -hmm. reported that video game addiction is very real, and that addiction is being preyed oh, upon yeah, by game 100%. companies to extract a lot of money out of a surprisingly small group of people. I think that like a lot of the people that like what they're really talking about, I feel like this th this this video does not really it does not differentiate the problem. There are two problems. There is video game addiction and there is gambling addiction. Now, what these games are really taking advantage of and making money off of is game gambling addiction. Because if you look at if you look at the cited works in these things right here, Activision Blizzard quarterly results 2017, they had already acquired King at that time. Uh, where are some of the other references here? Um, social media, that's Boy, bullshit. That oh, at risk gamblers again. They're talking about gambling. And Addiction let's see, it's the buried. second page right here. We'll read some more of these online gambling, social casino gambling. So I, I think this video did kind of uh, misinterpret uh, what this study was because it was very clear loot boxes are very different than buying a microtransaction. So th I think it does kind of misunderstand what the problem is, but it could explain it later. So let's keep watching. Real. And that addiction is being preyed upon by game companies to extract a lot of money out of a surprisingly small group of people. Yes, true. Reels is a term typically used by casinos to describe patrons that gamble significant amounts of money. The casinos yep. will cater to these high rollers in any way that they can Absolutely. so they keep coming back and losing more money at the tables. Whales in video games are just the same. It's like if they see Rich come in, like they actually... Um, they have two waitresses wait on him at the same time. Uh, anytime he goes down to Las Vegas, I'm just kidding. But like, it, that's the kind of shit that they have. Cause like they'll see somebody, especially th this is especially true with um, uh, like celebrities and things like this. Because like, you know, um, if uh, Nicolas Cage comes in, apparently I think Nicolas Cage is, is a gambler. Nicolas Cage comes in, uh, you're going to be making some money. Uh, that's what it comes down to. He's broke? Yeah, you know how he's broke? Gambling. You know why? Because they had two waitresses waiting on him and he kept showing up to the fucking uh to the fucking casino. And yeah, how do you think he went broke? Cater to them in the same way. You want to feel like an absolute badass? Drop $200 on in-game gems that will let you crush any opponent. Yeah. Except for maybe the guy that spent $500 on gems. The report explains that this rewards your brain by tricking it into believing that purchasing in-game items is just part of skillful gameplay. Wait, what? By really? Tricking it into part of skillful gameplay? Wait, what? I'm just reading this. Believing that purchasing... Gradual developments. This is like... I, 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 read the, I read the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but pretty much everything in it. This is like 80% gambling. Like the only thing that they really talked about that wasn't gambling was sunk cost fallacy, which also applies to gambling. So it's really not about the microtransactions, it's about the gambling aspect of them. In-game items is just part of skillful gameplay. This becomes all the more sinister when the game companies spend years refining their systems to maximize this effect on your brain. Mm -hmm. Perhaps nowhere is this clearer to see than in the loot box. For those of you who don't know, a loot box yeah. is a collective term given to in-game purchases that offer out random items. 
This means that a player could spend money on an in-game purchase and not get the item that they really wanted. They may not yep. get any item of value at all. Loot boxes add this element of chance into this toxic cocktail of predatory monetization, which can lock even the most pragmatic players into a loop of trying just one more spin to try and get that super rare character. Yeah, because it's, it's The next cheap. tool that these companies will use to their advantage is the player base themselves. Yeah. Online games are meant to be social. For many serious gamers, they spend more time with their online friends than they do interacting with the people in the real world, especially during the pandemic. There are three types of people Not that gamers especially. will meet in these games. Players that are better than them because they spend a lot of money, players that are worse than them but will offer an ego boost to the gamer who did spend a lot of money, and peers yeah. who have been conditioned by the game to not think too critically about dropping a few hundred bucks for a slight in-game advantage. Yeah, people Humans that just do it, they don't think about it. competitive beings. Gamers are on average more isolated than non-gamers. So when they get the chance to spend a little cash to flex in the social setting that they spend the most time They're in, gonna do most it. of them will take 100%. it. All of these yep. people, without even realizing it, will be pushing each other to spend more money in game, which is a big reason why some of the most profitable games in the world are free. The final tool is big data. Since most of these games are played online, the developers have one final advantage in the battle to extract cash from their customers' pockets. It's impossible for a gamer to know more about the game than the game company knows about them. Anybody who has played these types of games will be able to attest to the very confusing currency systems in the game. Some games will have multiple different- I just, I keep thinking about WoW whenever they're talking about this and they're talking about Clash of Clans. Currencies to collect, gems, coins, pearls, and they will all be used to unlock different things in the game. A coin might be used to pay for armor, but you will need- well, the, th the reason, so here's the reason why they have these, um, uh, these different, uh, uh, like, uh, currencies. The reason why they have the different currencies is so they can create a larger separation between the value of the item and the actual dollar amount. It's the obfuscation of it. It's a smokescreen. So you're buying a uh, 100 tokens. You're buying a 100 um, premium supply diamonds. And like how many uh, supply diamonds does it take to buy this motorcycle? Well, it's like 1200, but how much is that in real money? Well, it's, it's like, I don't know, uh, fucking $10 or something like that. So that's why, that's why casinos use chips. Yeah. The thing is like, this is not a brand new idea because if you just see the dollar amount on the store, it's easier to rationalize logically that it's not worth it but if you don't see the dollar amount you can confuse yourself into believing that it is to unlock special spells and cosmetic outfits can only be paid for with gems mm -hmm. many people have compared this to casinos giving players poker chips instead of letting them play with actual good idea money. guys because people don't experience the same emotional response handing over a hundred dollar poker chip as they would with a hundred dollar bill yeah it's like this a game is no doubt part of the strategy but I think in-game tokens are worse because while poker chips have a clear face value, these games make it really hard to work out how much value you are actually getting out of an in-game purchase. Well, it's all theoretical. It's all a theoretical value and it's a personal value. Like for example, the value that I get out of um, a, a microtransaction is probably not the same value that somebody else gets out of a uh, out of a microtransaction. Like for me, I buy a store mount and I don't care about the store mount. Why would I want the store mount? But somebody else buys it and they really care a lot. So yeah, it, it's a personal thing, which is why, ironically, it, it's easy for me not to spend money, but it's easy for other people to spend money. It introduces an exchange rate. The last thing you want to be doing while enjoying a game is exchange rate math. Yeah. Because of this, game companies can present tailored offers to gamers to maximize the chances that they go and pull out their credit card. Well, well they'll have things where it's like basically it's like basically one dollar for a hundred gems, and if you spend a uh, hundred dollars, you get a hundred. I don't know, like ten thousand five hundred gems or something like that. So you're effectively getting like five hundred more for free. Yeah, you know, this is very common. Like a uh, a twenty percent, a ten to twenty percent uh, inducement incentive in like buying the bulk. And EA both have patents on their microtransaction systems, and they keep them so closely guarded because they are the primary revenue generator for these two ginormous public yeah. companies. These companies want to form habits. 
A player who spends $100 every week is worth far more than a player who spends $1,000 just once. Yeah. This also slowly allows players to fall into the biggest trap of all time, the sunk cost. A game company is likely to make a very modest offer with a big reward first. If the gamer decides to purchase that offer, like a drug dealer, all subsequent offers will become gradually more expensive with declining true in-game value. Remember, this is made intentionally hard to keep track of because of the different in-game currencies the developers use. By the time the gamer realizes what has happened, they might have spent thousands of dollars on a video game that they thought they would be playing for free. At mm -hmm. that point, there is no point in putting the game down because they have already sunk so much time and effort into- In my opinion, I think people that can't realize how much money they're spending on a game, I think they're morons. I mean, I, I really do. I, I think they're complete morons. Uh, they're morons with no sense of financial responsibility or accountability. They're just, they're stupid. And like, I, I don't like the monetization but I don't really care whenever they scam themselves because I feel like it's just, it's mindless self-indulgence. You should be more accountable for your fucking money. It's your fucking money. You should be doing what you need to be doing with your money. Now, I'm talking about like people that are buying microtransactions. I'm not talking about people that are gambling because gambling is a legitimate fucking thing. Buying a microtransaction just because you want to, oh, I accidentally spent $200. What do you mean you accidentally spent $200? How does this happen? Especially the people that accidentally spend $200 are almost always the people that shouldn't have accidentally spent $200. Like, for example, if uh, Trainwreck accidentally spends $200, it'd be all right. You know, I think things would be okay. If I accidentally spend $200, that's fine. But if some random fucking guy that just, you know, he's in college, accidentally spends $200, it, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Wake the fuck up. Pay attention. And the thing is, like, there's a lot of people, I just in general, like, I don't have a lot of respect for people that are financially irresponsible. Like, I don't feel sorry for them. I usually feel like, oh, you're fucking dumb because you spent all your money on this thing that you shouldn't have spent your money on. You shouldn't have fucking done that. Like, that's what you do. It's the same as like people that go out. Uh, they go out partying every weekend. They spend uh, $200 and then they're broke all the time. No, man, this isn't society's fault. That's your fault. You're, that, you're spending your money. You are doing this to yourself. Playing this game that it would be I know, silly too many to stop people like now. That. A lot of these video game whales are not wealthy either. On the contrary, the report found that a lot of these purchases were paid for with debt that the gamer had no way of paying back. Jesus Christ. So what are you to do when you have mounting debt and a partner that is angry at you for spending your grocery money on a virtual battleship? Well, uh, you want to give them five extra free loot boxes. Yeah, give them five, five extra ones for free. Yeah, keep stringing them along. You look for an escape, of course. And what better escape exists than an online universe filled with your enthusiastic friends who all think that you're a hero because you unlocked the Ultra Mega Sword, which yeah. you could upgrade right now to the Giga Ultra Mega Sword for just $29.99. Yep. Preying on habitual addictive behavior from socially isolated people who just want a platform to socialize on is extremely unethical. Every bit as unethical as a casino without even offering the chance for these players to make any of their money back. Now, if you want to learn about more ways that companies are intentionally- I, I feel like a casino is worse, personally. Like, this is, like, my opinion, is that nobody ever goes into an Overwatch loot box thinking that they're going to make their money back. Because the idea and the possibility of being able to make your money back is so much more insidious. Because you know the money you're spending on this game is gone. It is it is gone. You're not going to get anything out of it. It's done. CSGO skins, of course there are exceptions, but I think that many people see where I'm getting at. Hijacking internet culture for their own profit. Go and watch my video on the companies intentionally fueling the meme bubble to profit off people investing into securities like GameStop, AMC, and cryptocurrencies. I might watch that. Since this not video today. is obviously not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, I want to say another thank Big you mistake. to Morning Brew, my patrons and channel members, for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works. So I want to talk a little bit about loot boxes and about which things I think are okay and which things I think are not okay. So personally, 
I don't have a problem with microtransactions that are, are added into the game that are, it's like you pay $10, you get this sword. What I really, really, really have a problem with and what I think actually needs to be, in my opinion, just straight up made illegal. Like you just, you, you take it Box. and it's not in the game. Like it's just, it, you, you can't do it anymore is loot boxes. I think that loot boxes should just simply be illegal, period. Like no exceptions. If you spend real money on the loot box, it doesn't exist anymore. That's it. I think that buying the cosmetic, like you take the same cosmetic, you put it on the store. I don't care if they put it up for a thousand dollars. Like they can put it up for however much they much they want, but you cannot let people fucking gamble with this loot box bullshit. And it's already I know, I know, I know guys that it's already illegal in some places in the in the EU. People are talking about the Netherlands. People are talking about Belgium. Yes, I know that. And thank fucking God that they actually have governmental leadership that know how to use a computer. And they see what this kind of shit is. The loophole of selling gold or game currency in the store and then offering the loot boxes for gold. Well, just shut that down too. The thing is, like, it just shut, it did just shut that down too. Like, it's really easy how to solve this kind of stuff. It's so fucking easy. And, and like, the thing is that, I say this many times, like, if you think if the government wanted to shut it down, they couldn't do it. Of course they could. It's so fucking easy. So, yeah, regulators aren't by corporations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fucking joke. And, and so, anyway, I think that the loot boxes, that's where it needs to stop. Like, that's where I draw the line. I think loot boxes are bad because it, it pay-to-win transactions even. Just fine totally fucking fine i think that loot boxes are another it's like another like massive measure worse than all other types of just you buy pay a buy b you see what i'm saying pay a buy b is totally fucking fine loot boxes are not that's what i don't like because it is obviously fucking gambling it is 100 percent gambling it feeds on people that have gambling addictions and it is in a it, this is a quantitative fact that has been defined and researched and studied on for years and it still exists gambling with no dollar returned yes which makes it better in my opinion it, it is better than casino gambling however that does not make it good you see what i'm saying Everybody knows American lobbyism, cancer is keeping a place. I don't know. I mean, I think that more and more places are getting rid of it. I'm, I mean, like, who knows what's going to happen in the future? I don't know. What about TCGs? I'm not talking about TCGs. I don't give a fuck about TCGs. I'm talking about this. Uh, I don't give a fuck about that. Uh, imagine only Thunder Fury. Yeah, imagine you only get Thunder Fury bindings and loot boxes only. Exactly. So, yeah, this is something that I don't want to see. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Think about how bad gotcha games are. I don't care. I don't care about gotcha games as long as they sell the items directly. You see what I'm saying? As long as they are selling the items directly, I do not care. The loot boxes are the problem. They don't? Well, then I'm not talking about that. Well, th that's not what I'm talking about then. So, yeah. I, I'm just talking about the loot boxes. That's what it really comes down to. There's only gotcha games, so I don't I don't play gotcha games really. Yeah, that's the thing. So I have no idea. So uh, what if you can gamble once a week for monthly sub? I just I feel like any gambling feature that has a real world component uh, that you can get money out of or that you can put money into, especially like you can do it as many times as you want. It's just bad. What about BDO enhancement system and pay to win? Listen, I, I know whenever I talk about this stuff, people want to give me 5,000 different other scenarios to get my take on it as if I'm like a judge and it's like, well, what about this case and this case and this case and that case and this case and this case? Listen, I, I'm not a fucking judge. I, I don't have the answer right in front of me of every single example like Pokemon cards. I don't know about Pokemon cards. I am talking very fucking specifically about the games that you buy a loot box in the game, you open the loot box, and it has a random item in it. That should not exist. The other stuff, I'm not talking about that right now. This shit should not exist. It's that simple. You should be a judge. I don't think so, all right?
You know, compare Wubox to by TCG. I don't want to argue about it. Like, why are we talking about something that's not, that has nothing to do with it? Yeah, it, it's got nothing to fucking do with it. Like, this is what I don't want. Like, yeah, get rid of this. Yeah, it's not relevant. And, like, the problem is, like, every single other example you bring in, there's, like, uh, this is a problem, and this is why I think that a lot of times people aren't as concerted and unified with dealing with it, is because people try to bring in a hundred different examples and turn this into, like, a philosophy thing, and because of them doing that, they make it so complex and hard to actually address one thing because you're trying to make an umbrella rule for like 50 different things that are all different. It's impossible to do that. It's like you focus on one thing at a time. You look at one thing and you say, this one thing is bad. And then you get rid of that one thing and then you move to something else. And in my opinion, this is number one. Get rid of it. Loot boxes suck. I don't like them. I've opened loot boxes many times before, and I fully expect that in the future, I will probably open loot boxes again. I am not a gambler. I am not addicted to gambling. I never have been, and I probably never will be. I have never gambled a single dollar in my life in any casino or any slot or anything like that, and I fully intend to keep it that way. I don't like that kind of stuff. I think it's ridiculous, and I generally hate gambling. However, I don't really care if a game gives me a loot box, I'll open it up, see what it is, or whatever. It's not really a big deal to me, but I still don't think that they should exist because they do prey on people that both have uh, at least a gambling addiction and maybe also a gaming addiction at the same time. You know, that's basically where it's at. What about WoW token microtransactions? Well, I don't like them. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't like my, I don't like the WoW token. But it's a big difference between me not liking the WoW token and something that's able to prey on people that have gambling addictions and ruin their lives. Like these are just why are kidney shot stun. Why are we talking about stun locked? I'm not stun locked. I'm I'm having a discussion. We're having a conversation. We're talking about different points. Like this is what I do at the end of the video. We we talk about the different points of the video and 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 have a conversation about it. It's, it's, this is normal. Two hours people are getting mad at their government for banning loot boxes because the game publishers are not releasing or region locking the game in said country. So people can't play the games they want but are forced to adapt, accept the loot boxes. If enough companies, or sorry, enough countries do this, like a game company cannot make enough money if it's only getting uh, sales from like a handful of countries that don't have it banned. You see what I'm saying? So that's only viable whenever only a handful of them have it banned. Whenever it's banned everywhere, then there's not like that other place they can go. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they'll still keep it up in countries where it's not banned? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the thing is, like, you're always going to have stupid, weird stuff like this. Absolutely. But in general, uh, that doesn't mean that you should not... T it's like this... I've said this a hundred times, right? You, you just be... like. There's never been a law that's ever been made that got rid of a crime. Think about how long murder's been against the law. And it happens every day. It's not about getting rid of the crime. It's about minimizing it. It's that simple. It's easy to understand. Uh, there might just be replacements for lost revenue and loot boxes, which could be just as bad as for consumers, i.e. buying power. Um, then you deal with that. That's the next level. Like, this is always... I want you to understand, it's like botting. So whenever you ban one type of botting, there will be another type of botting that will take its place. Does that mean that you should not ban the first type of botting? No. It's always going to be a cat and mouse game. You just have to understand that. It, you just, you're playing the game. Is you get them, and then they figure out another way. And then you get them again. And then they figure out another way. Then you get them again. Like, that's just how it works. Yeah, it's that simple, man. And when a gaming community has loud enough voice to actually make changes like this, do you uh, see gambling by governments as real gambling? Uh, yeah, I think what's going to happen is, like, the more that uh, the more that people our age 
uh, become, you know, they take uh, they take governmental positions like you have uh, AOC, uh, Dan Crenshaw. You have a lot of people that are like under 40, like let's say. And these people are taking and holding, uh, you know, relatively high political offices. And both of these uh, both these people like they probably understand what microtransactions and games are better than uh, Mitch McConnell does or better than uh, John McCain did. Right. They, they AOC is an idiot. You're just like, why are you talking about that? Why does that have anything to like? What is that? What does that have to do with anything? Like I, nobody cares about your opinion on AOC and like her policies. It has, it's completely fucking irrelevant. It has there's no it's an example of age. Like just completely missed the point. Yeah, I don't give a fuck what your political opinion is of a of a some politician. Nobody cares. Really, like it, like your message is like, whoop, it's gone. Do not even waste your time. Don't even you don't even need to type it. It's gone. Nobody thinks about it. Nobody cares about it. It doesn't matter. So all I'm really saying here is that as as people that are our age and also younger than us and older than us, you know, the same general area. I think Dan Crenshaw is like 37 or so, right? But like the guy probably understands to a certain degree uh, what gaming is. He's probably played more video games than, let's say, again, like Nancy Pelosi. Who do you think plays more fucking video games, right? Who do you think understands more about video games? And once those people take office and there's more of them and they're more politically involved like joe biden's another good example like you think joe biden knows what a loot box is but i mean an honest question like i would assume that joe biden does not even know what a loot box is he has no fucking idea so that's what i'm really trying to get at uh people will get older uh they'll be in government and they'll be able to deal with this stuff that's probably what happened in uh maybe belgium and um what was the other example uh, in the netherlands uh where it was banned too and those are much smaller countries than america so it's easier to have movements there uh, it's easier for things to change in a country that has 20 million people versus a country that has 350 million people we have a very simple message loot boxes suck they should be banned period done just keep it like that.